I'm going to show you how I took this photo and turned it into this using Lightroom and Photoshop right after the intro. From now on, like your parents were. You are the secret force of the so guys, I finally went out of my shell last week and I went out to shoot this gorgeous Supra. And now I'm about to walk you through the edit. But before I do so, let me just walk you through how it was shot. And usually I do shoot on a tripod and I do have a CPL filter to remove reflection, but I decided to keep the reflection in this shot. Also, this edit is a single photo shot and I did not use two, three or four like I always do so. Um, I kind of wanted to experiment with the reflections and everything else within the car. So the focal length of this shot was about 50 and I shot it at f10. And the way that I prepped this in Lightroom, I just did the basic adjustments, the usual things that we do before we take it into Photoshop. Now, if you're not aware of my process and you'd like to learn more about how I do things in Photoshop and Lightroom, I do have a premium tutorial and I'll leave a link to that premium tutorial in the description below. Make sure to check it out. All right, so nothing major has been done here. Uh, this is the before and this is the after. I just did uh, the basic global adjustments and moved it into Photoshop. All right, now that we are in Photoshop, the first thing that I usually do with every single photo is to clean it up. And I create a new layer to clean up you know, all that messy stuff. And trust me guys, it makes a lot of differences. So this is the before. This is the after, so the cleanup, and you can see how clean looking the photo is, although I left a few debris here and there. But the more you do it, the more you clean up the photo, the slickier it will look like, if that's the term. Now, one thing that I didn't like about this shot is the color. I can't remember the color being that when I saw it. Let me, in fact, let me show you what the color looked like. Now, here's a shot from the top, um, that I took of the Supra and you can see on the right, just about here, the color looks different to what it is in here. And sometimes this happens, especially depending on the paint and how the paint track with light it just changes its hue and saturation depending on how the light interacts with that paint. So, um, I created a new layer and I kind of painted on top of it. I actually did that twice, once here. And I didn't like the color afterwards and I did it again up there, but I'm going to show you that later on. Um, I do not use the pen tool, honestly, and I just trace around the car with my Wacom tablet or screen or Cintiq or whatever they call it. I just found it easier to do so. I did, however, remove a bit from the blacks in case I went over to the blacks of the car. Um, using the layer style. So basically I'm telling Photoshop to remove that paint that I did if it interacts with the darkest area of the photo. I hope that makes sense. So next I decided to darken the ground and I did this with a new layer and I set it to soft light and I dropped the opacity down to about 50% and that just I wanted to darken the ground just to, um, you know, get the focus more towards the car. Now I forgot to mention that what you see on top here is actually my hand. Yeah, it is my hands. Um, I forgot the lens hood the other day and uh, I decided to use my hand. Now let me show you why. Now this is the shot that I selected for the uh, edit. If I show you the ones without my hand, you'll see that there's a lot of haze going in front of the car. And I know that this is something that is fixable maybe using the dehaze. I just didn't feel like using this. And I kind of liked how my hand were in the shot. It kind of created that star. Um, burst from the sun and uh, it just worked well. All right, so after darkening uh, the ground, I did a bit of dodging and burning to the tires and the wheels. Um, I didn't touch the car in this case. It's just the wheels using the gray layer. And then I merged all the layers into a new one and I uh, 
added a camera raw filter. So let's have a look at that. Now, if you look closely, I did warm up the photo, but wanted more of a warm tone. I had a bit of texture, clarity, and a bit of vibrance, and I maybe even added a bit of sharpening over here with a kind of a masking, just to make sure that it doesn't sharpen the things that I don't want it to sharpen. On top of that, I did use a graduated filter. So here you go. You know, I used that. I just didn't want it to look so obvious, so I didn't darken it a lot. Just a little tad. I want everything to draw the eyes towards the car. So that's why I usually do that. So I do have my hand on top, and then I did kind of darken the ground. That's about it. Like I said, if you're not aware of my workflow, check out my other videos or the premium tutorial in the description below. All right, moving forward, I wanted to warm up that flare coming from the sun. And I did add a new layer. I just uh, stroked with my brush, the yellow brush converted that into uh, sorry, and, and changed the blending mode into soft light and dropped down the opacity to 28%. So it's very subtle. There you go. Now, the other thing that I did and we spoke about earlier is the color of the car, right? So if you look again, once again to this photo, it kind of, they don't look exactly alike. It's just the way that the color interacts with light. So I copied that layer at the bottom and I actually selected this color tone and painted on top of it and set the blending mode to soft light and drop the opacity to 15% and maybe I can drop it a little bit more but I kind of like how the color look like right now. Um, yeah, I was happy with the way that color looked like. Now I looked at the photo and I was like, hmm, it looks great. However, it's missing that something. I'm not sure what it is. So instead of adding a vignette to draw more attention to the car, I actually did put an overlay. And uh, let me show it to you. Where is it? There you go. So the first one I used was this, and we spoke previously about overlays, and I'll leave a link to that video in the description below, because it has another link to these overlays. And I dropped it um, on top, of course, the other layers. However, I just didn't want um, that to overtake the look of the car. So I dropped in a mask, and I masked out these portions of the car. Straightforward, right? Now the other one that I looked at is the bokeh and lens flares, stuff like that. If you look at it, it looks like this. So I drop that on top, set the blending mode to screen, and I also added a mask to remove these artifacts. Although they look like kind of cool, but uh, it was overly cool. The last thing I did is I added a color lookup. It's very subtle. Um, these ones are from the IWLT BAP. For some reason, that's what they call them uh, themselves. And uh, if I put this at 100%, that will be an overkill. And if you drop that down to what it is, I think it was 10% to 20%. I think it looks good. Let's keep that somewhere in between. That's it. Now, it's worth to mention that I also did one more thing when I brought back the photo into Lightroom, and I could have done it here, but you know, because since it was in Lightroom already and it was done, I, oops, not this one, it's this one. I played with the tone curve, you can see I just lifted the shadows up, so no information coming down here. It just gave it that look. So if you look at the before, after I just raised the black and that's it. That's it guys. Boy, I haven't done tutorials in a while. And uh, yeah, that's about it guys. Thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Subscribe to this amazing channel. 
and uh, I'll see you in the next video.